Today we'll be talking about FileCalus Server and some of the settings you need to have in place in order to make a connection. The first thing you'll want to do after installing and running FileCalus Server is check its status, which is found in the lower right corner of the interface. A red light here would indicate a port conflict, which is usually caused by an FTP server or another FileCalus server running on the same machine. Resolve this by closing the other application or setting FileCalus Server to use a different port. The port settings for FileCalus Server are found in the Advanced section, which also tells us which ports we need to open through our firewall and NAT. The green light only indicates that FileCalus Server is running without a conflict. You will need to configure your firewall and forward your ports so that outside connections can reach the FileCalus Server. The control channel is on port 21, which needs to be open for TCP connections. The data ports range by default from 8000 to 8999. This range needs to be open for both TCP and UDP. Naturally, you can change these to other values as you see fit. If you are using a NAT device, you may need to enable Masquerade. Basically, Masquerade just allows the server to tell the client which IP address to use. Therefore, the Masquerade address is simply the public IP. Since we're not using Masquerade in our example, I'm going to disable it. Before we add our first user, let's set up some defaults. Click on the Users area and select the User Defaults tab. The default user's home directory root is set to a subdirectory of the install path, which is not usually ideal. I already have a data path I want to use, so I'm simply going to enter it in the field. Then click Apply. Next, I'm going to switch to the Usernames tab. Since this is a new installation, I'm going to force lowercase usernames right from the beginning. This is entirely optional, but it might help future-proof your organization. Once you've selected the option, click Apply. Other defaults you could set include default permissions and default bandwidth and quota. For now, we're going to move on to adding a user. Since we're already in the Users section, all we need to do is click on the User List and select Add New User. A wizard launches, which allows you to quickly set up a new user account. On the first page of the wizard, all fields are required. These include a username and a password that you need to confirm. The second page has optional fields, although it's not a bad idea to include an email address. The final page allows us to set a home directory, which as you can see, uses our default root plus the username. We also see that our default file permissions and folder permissions are intact, so we can go ahead and click Finish. The user appears in the user list with the username forced to lowercase, and we're ready to make a connection. FileCalus provides a wide range of client options for this connection, including web applets, command line, API, and our feature rich hot folder application. With FileCalus server running and a user account created, we're ready to go. Additional tutorials may be found on our website or through our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.